Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. I hope that you're awake. This is uh, early morning. I was asked to start and to teach the cardiologists among you about what is new in acute stroke. And there's a lot of new things in acute stroke. And if you look, I hope that I'm, and this is my disclosure. And the story of acute stroke is this word, penumbra. And as you can see, the penumbra here is the tissue at risk that you would like to risk you when the patient comes here in with acute ischemic stroke. I'm talking about acute ischemic stroke. The dead tissue is dead, but this tissue here, it's solvable. And that is our aim in acute stroke. So the penumbra is the issue. And the penumbra is time dependent. It grows when time goes alone. Therefore, we call this word time is brain. And time is brain means that when you don't treat, every minute you lose about two million neurons. I don't have enough of them to lose. So, but I think that's the story is therefore, you have to reperfuse the brain in order to rescue and salvage these neurons that are still alive and striving for oxygen and glucose. So here you go, there are several ways to do it. Nowadays we have two options. One is to dissolve the, the clot which is sitting in the artery. One is IV TPA and the other one is the most heroical thing that is everybody is talking today is thrombectomy to retrieve the clot from the brain with endovascular treatment. IV TPA is the bread and butter of the, cardio of the neurologist and we should know that. And it was shown in many clinical trials that IV TPA works and the earlier the better. As you can see here, the likelihood to, so, to save the brain in after 90 minutes, it's much better and it's going down as time goes elapses. And nowadays the guidelines said up to 4.5 hours. The American guidelines to say up to three hours and in some cases up to 4.5 hours. So definitely it works and we should do it fast. And nowadays we are talking not about time is brain, but time is clot, which means that the interval from symptoms to onset of IV TPA, it's important because the resolving of the, the clot is time dependent. And the, as you can see here, again, the, once you go down, dissolving or the, the likelihood to dissolve the clot is getting less and less. So we have to run, we have to go fast. And this is a new area of the cardiologist, of the, of the neurologist, that all of a sudden the neurologist has to run, like the cardiologist has to go to the cat lab and run with the patient. I just want to remind you that this is thrombolysis, IV thrombolysis is still the bread and butter for strokeologists. Although we have other treatment nowadays, as I'll show you immediately, but we have to know that this is our main stream of treatment. Of course, sometimes when IV TPA may fail, and usually it's in a large proximal occlusion of large artery, what we call LVO, large, occlusion, large vessel occlusion, we need to do some more. And this is the mechanical thrombectomy. When TPA may fail to deliver, then we have to retrieve the clot out of the system. And there again, there were many, many studies, currently about eight, seven of them, that have shown the beneficial effect of endovascular treatment in acute ischemic stroke in large vessel occlusion. These are all the trials that based definitely show all of them showed dramatic benefit 
of endovascular treatment. This was triumph of in Los Angeles a couple of years ago, and bingo, 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 all the trials were actually showing the same, showing the same that overall treatment effect is number needed to treat 2.6. This is amazing, amazing achievement. And as you can see, the number needed to treat going down, of course, as is in IV TPA, time is important. And nowadays, of these trials, it was shown, oh sorry, it was shown that around six to 7.3 hours is probably, this is the Hermes collaboration. This is a, a, a meta-analysis or review of all the, all, all the trials together, 7.3 hours. And the guidelines up till last year actually was six hours. And the vascular treatment, either with IVTPA, if the patient comes in in time for IV TPA or only endovascular treatment alone. So it's bridging IV TPA plus endovascular treatment or endovascular treatment alone between 4.5 to 6 hours. But I'll show you that nowadays it has changed. Time has extended and the dawn in full daylight, dawn was a trial, the first trial, that actually showed that with certain way of imaging, the penumbra or the tissue at risk, some of this tissue still alive up to 24 hours. And it was called wake-up strokes. Many, about one-fifth of our strokes occurred during night. But IVTP is not allowed up till now to give if you don't know the exact onset of the symptoms. So if you wake, I go to bed at 11 o'clock, you wake up at 6 with hemiparesis, you cannot give TPA. But you can give, or you can give, you do from back to me in a certain, I'm not going into detail, and this is another study, the diffuse. So both of them actually show this is up to 16 hours, from six hours to 16 hours by uh, Greg Alders, and they show that actually you can do it in an extended time window, and this study particularly used a software called the Rapid, where it actually you, you push the button and you can see whether penumbra is there, go, it gives you green light, go or no go to endovascular treatment. I'm not going into detail because it's a little bit uh, uh, complicated, but this rapid software with MRI, this is MRI uh, uh, based uh, imaging. So at that, because of these two studies, the guidelines, the American guidelines in 2018, February 2018, have changed the time window and they said that you can perform endovascular treatment based on the criteria of these two studies, the DOWN study and the diffuse three studies. And therefore, nowadays, we have an extended time window. So more patients are eligible for treatment, in this case, endovascular treatment, not IV. These are endovascular treatment in patients that wake up or last seen normal was up to 24 hours. So there are still, the status of acute stroke reperfusion is there, but we should increase the number of patients that are actually receiving this treatment. We have an actually ec excellent treatment to save our, the brain of our patients, but unfortunately the implementation is not that great. And there's still, there is potential for TPA to delay more than 4.5 hours. I'll show you ex immediately the first study that showed it. The tissue clock rather than the hour clock, the chronological clock, based on the MRI that can show penumbra even after 4.5 hours for IV TPA, not for endotrectomy. 
this is one. And of course, we should improve maybe the endovascular treatment actually change our way to treat the patient, or maybe also have, maybe we'll have some, a better IV lytic, like tenecti plate, I'll show you immediately. So how can we improve our approach to our patients? Can we improve it? So what I said, you can use the time, the time, the actual time clock, is out, we should use imaging to show the, whether there is enough penumbra to rescue the, and the MRI is probably the best way. There are several other ways to do it, like CT perfusion. So we have now an advanced technology to show the penumbra. And therefore, we can treat more patients if we see that there is tissue at risk that we can salvage. And as I said, there are several uh, software that can, we can use to show the penumbra. The rapid one is the most probably the most used one, but there are several others. There, and now we can go into new era where we use the, not the clock, but the tissue clock. Oops, <clears throat> sorry. And it is, all this is because, sorry. All this is because, hello, because it was shown that, and this is a very nice study, and uh, I, I, I've taken this from uh, uh, Andrew Damchuk, that showed that some of the patient goes right and the penumbra is gone within two hours. But some of them, these are slow progressors. And these slow progressors are the aim of our extending the time window but we should identify them. And identification is by these new techniques, imaging techniques. So how can we prove it? How can we do it? And we can do it. There's the first study that was done, it's called the Wake Up. This is uh, from Germany by Tomala. And uh, he is present, he, this was published already. He extended the time window to nine hours based on MR technique, and uh, it was shown that in this case, this technique, when you use this, they, it is very efficacious, and these patients actually did better if you show that there is still a penumbra there. And the median time from symptom recognition to treatment was three hours, so quite, quite fast, but after the patient was wake up so on. So definitely nowadays is probably will use this to increase the time window also for IV TPA, not just for the endovascular treatment. What about new TPA? TPA is very good, but still has some problems and we know that the TPA may cause hemorrhages and TPA is toxicity by itself. So tenecteplase is the new agent or new boy on the neighborhood, and it's superior for thrombolytic agent for many aspects. It also has some longer half time, has more affinity to fibrin, and therefore, and cause less hemorrhagic events or hemorrhagic uh, complication. And it was tested by the, uh, first by uh, the, the Australian group, Bruce Campbell and his colleagues, and also by Moore from Scotland. So, and it was shown that there is, from the efficacy, there is a trend to better. It was tested against TPA. And for the safety, is also much better. So I think that we are facing, and this is the Extend IA, it was published, uh, where they compare TPA to tenecteplase, as you can see, a substantial reperfusion at the initial angiogram was shown by TNK, the 10 place. So we have a new, probably uh, a new guy on, that's, that can use with IV TPA. It does show that there is definitely a better reperfusion rate with the TPA, and there is the safety outcome is also better with the place than with TPA. So. 
And just the last point is that if you look at, this is the within three hours of symptom onset, the question is always for us, the stochologists, patient comes in with a very mild stroke. In time for IV TPA, should we give TPA with the hazard of hemorrhagic complication, yes or not? And we know that, and this is within three hours of symptom onset, with mild ischemic stroke and just by non-disabling stroke, can we use them? And there was a study called the PRISM that actually showed us that what we do, and most of us, most of the stochologists sitting here, we treat mild stroke with IV TPA. That's a policy. But Puja Katri showed us that it's not that safe. Although the study was stopped before and there was not a uh, but, however, he showed that actually there was a hemorrhagic transformation with TPA in these patients, and the safety uh, profile of this patient is not that innocent. So we have to be cautious when we're treating disabling stroke, or non-disabling stroke, sorry, non-aphasia or hemianopia, but it, hemiparesis, we have to be cautious. The TEMPO study that is currently running by the Canadian group, they are using TNK uh, 0.25 milligram versus an, a TPA in minor stroke patient to solve this po uh, problem, whether TNK is better than TPA in, in mild stroke that you can give without the hazard of complication. We'll see what is, will be the result is currently ongoing study. And the last point is the low dose. Some people say, like Greg Anderson from Australia said, in the Asia, they use 0 0.6 per uh, milligram per kilo because they have more tendency to hemorrhages. Why? Why is that there? Maybe we can use it all over in order to reduce the complication and with the same efficacy. So he ran this, the Enchanted trial, that actually showed there's four more excellent outcome with standard dose, but 5.5 more good outcome and five floor mortality in the low dose. So study is shown that maybe the efficacy is not that great, but the safety is much better. And this is the study one third of many of ICH with low dose TPA if you take antiplatelet. So maybe if the patient comes here in on aspirin, maybe it's not good to give him a low dose. This is a sub-analysis of the enchanted and you have to be cautious because the hemorrhagic transformation is higher. So, but without antiplatelet, the efficacy and the safety is better. So, what I want, this is the current story. There are many equipoise that we should still need to answer together with the cardiologists. There is interaction, and this is my last slide. Like I always try to quote Churchill, it is not the end, it is not even the beginning of the end, perhaps the end of the beginning. Thank you. <laughs>